Housed in Washington's newest and biggest architectural behemoth, the Pentagon Building, is the headquarters of the Army Service Forces and its taut and forceful commander, Lieutenant General Brehan Somerville. Among his staff are seven trusted major generals who head the technical services of the ASF, each a key man in America's plan for victory. Oldest technical body in the Army Service Forces is the Quartermaster Corps, traditionally the Army's tailors and caterers. 70,000 different items of food, clothing and equipment, other than arms, must be regularly supplied by these men for the millions of American troops at home or on the invasion front, as well as many objects destined for lend-lease aid to America's allies. Every day at home or abroad, from quartermaster depots, are coming in a continuous flow all the innumerable workaday necessities without which an army cannot live and cannot fight. The Corps of Engineers numbers in its elite the intelligentsia of the Army. Its role as troubleshooter and trailblazer for American forces overseas has made its part in the invasion of the Axis Fortress a basic one. Army engineers must be ready to demolish or construct in every corner of the world at war. The Army Map Service, operated by the Corps of Engineers, has issued to every American expeditionary force accurate topographic information checked and brought constantly up to date by expert cartographers and a staff of aerial photo analysts. High-speed offset presses have already supplied close to a thousand tons of detailed maps to American forces overseas. Each map a tile in the mosaic of invasion. Upon no department of the Army Service Forces have invasion requirements made greater demands than upon the Ordnance Department, charged with designing and procuring all weapons and vehicles with which the Army fights and travels. But in a year and a half of war, American arms production has caught up with and surpassed the combined output of the Axis nation. Today, the Signal Corps of the ASF stands ready to set up and maintain the network of communications on which all future combined sea, air, and land operations depend for success. The Chemical Warfare Service, knowing well the lengths to which desperation may drive a cornered enemy, is ready to make reprisals in kind should the Axis resort to the use of poison gas. In training, following doctrines laid down by the Chemical Warfare Service, soldiers have been conditioned to gas attacks, become adept in the use of chemical smoke screens. The medical department of the ASF, confronted with problems of medicine, surgery and hygiene on every continent, has its plans well evolved to combat injury and disease on any and every front. And due to their diligence and research, Thousands of lives will have been saved, many an epidemic averted in occupied territory. The transit of tens of millions of tons of supplies and millions of fighting men is the function of the Army Service Forces Transportation Corps, whose men have learned in camp to act as stevedores in distant bridgehead ports and as railroad men in war areas to ensure the delivery of supplies without loss of time to the fighting front. 